I noticed that this year after the large amount of wildfires throughout the state and being concerned and, and the praiseworthy action of your, your crews being out to help, we received a lot of calls about controlled burns, in particular agriculture burns after the fires in our area. And this seems to be a communication issue. Is there a way to help improve uh, communication between the people uh, conducting the agricultural burn in Grant County Fire District 5? Well, to the best of my knowledge, we have pretty good communication now. Uh, the Department of Agriculture does license or does permit agricultural, uh, agricultural burns. Um, they are permitted even though there may be a, a countywide or statewide burn ban. Uh, I know that we do receive a contact, typically we receive a contact from uh, the individual, the farmer or something that's going to burn off a field. They'll call us and say, hey, we're going to have a burn at this area, so we know about it. It's hard to get that word out to the general public. So our dispatch center will get calls, hey, there's a big fire out there. Um, they may call us, call our uh, uh, officer in charge, and they'll tell them, yes, we do have a control burn. Or if it's paged out, ROIC will, will just simply say, hey, you know, we've got a control burn we know about. So communicating with the public's a little hard, but we do have, it seems like, pretty good communication between the, the farmers and the district and when they're going to do that. Okay. Um, we're here to help with the public part, but uh, it was can be disturbing seeing a large column of smoke over the city after a, a summer of fire like we've had. And maybe that's something we can look at as a, a PSA. If we know something's coming in, maybe contact iFiber and uh, put something out in the news. Hey, there's going to be an agricultural burn today at this location and, and get the information out that way. I'm glad to help. There was a the question I had when you mentioned Wheeler Corridor reminded me of some information about REC about specialized training for firefighting at uh, chemical plants and in heavy industry. Is that something that Grant County Fire District 5 has to work with a lot? Is that specialized type of training? Well, we would work with, we do quite a bit of specialized training. We do have our uh, technical team. As far as working with the chemicals, you know, we go to the hazmat operations level. You start getting into technician that's, that's pretty specialized. I mean, the amount of training it takes to be a tech level hazmat responder, the amount of equipment that you would have. Uh, the, I don't believe we have a regional hazmat tech team that can, uh, can come in. It's something that I would like to see, uh, maybe a joint effort between the city of Moses Lake, Grant County 5, some of the other fire districts around here. Uh, I just had a conversation with uh, uh, Acting Chief Brett Bastian with the, uh, with the city, and uh, he said that we have per capita, and I want to try to word this right, the largest, I guess to, to, to simplify it, the largest chemical response of any place in the state because of the, the level and the type of chemicals that we have here. So it would warrant looking into having a regional tech, tech level response team that could respond for that, that we don't, you know, we can't pull anybody out of Seattle in a timely fashion or Spokane. We should have something regional. Okay. We've talked with uh, Moses Lake fire officials as well as some of their city officials about their ambulance service and the long day trips of transporting non-emergency patients. Does Grand County Fire District 5 have any similar service or situation like that? No, we don't. Uh, we provide support, <coughs> excuse me, to AMR. Uh, AMR is the, the EMS provider for the fire district. They provide an ALS service. Uh, we will provide a BLS response to assist them on scene, but as far as transports, we have no transport capability. Okay. Earlier you mentioned the commission and the number of commissioners. You'd like to see it expand from three to five, correct? Correct. Do you, uh, do you think the other two commissioners might be interested in such a move? or? Do you think it's going to take some convincing? I think it's going to take a little bit of convincing. Uh, I have had some dialogue with the uh, current commissioners about that. Um, it didn't seem to gain much traction, but I think that there's, with enough dialogue, maybe they'll see the value in having uh, the additional commissioners. Uh, one of the problems we have is we have to have a quorum of two to make a meeting happen, and if you know, if we don't have at least two there, then we cannot conduct our business. So with three, it spreads, or with five, it would spread it out a little bit. You know, we'd have to have a quorum of three, but we have a pool of five people to pick from. 
but just having that additional brain trust there and, and uh, the different backgrounds and experiences in that, I think could benefit the, the district. I was gonna say, it might change how, how decisions are made too. Oh, absolutely. All right. What would you say, uh, out of all the accomplishments you've had as working with the fire district, which one do you, are you the most proud of? Working in prevention, getting out into the community, doing public education, getting into the schools, uh, working with, with our, our young, you know, one, trying to show them a side of fire service that could be attractive to them as they grow up, maybe they want to come in. Uh, we seem to have a lot of our, our youth in the community that grow up in the community, they stay in the community, and it would be nice to be able to bring them in. Uh, we run an active uh, recruit program. Uh, we have one that's going on now, I believe, but we have a lot of young, uh, young members that uh, will develop into firefighters when they get to the right age and uh, be able to participate more and maybe go on to be career firefighters. Can you explain a little bit about the requirements to become a volunteer firefighter? Well, to become a volunteer, one, you have to have a desire to, to serve the community and to be able to put yourself in a position where most people wouldn't do it. You know, not everybody will go into a burning building. Most of the time you, want, you see people coming out of them. And, you know, it, it's, it is a dangerous environment, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, with technologies and the safety equipment stuff now, it's not as dangerous as it was 30 years ago when I started out. But um, you, you, you want to bring people in that want to serve, want to learn, they're eager, they're enthusiastic, and have an aptitude because there's a science to it. It's not just take the truck to the fire and put water on the fire. There, you need to be able to, to look at what you have and make good solid decisions based on what you see in an instant. And that's not something everybody can do. Okay. And volunteers, are they paid when they're firefighting or is it just pure volunteer time? I'm just curious here. It's, they receive a stipend Okay. Um, here at Grant County Five, the volunteers receive, I believe, it's ten dollars per call or ten dollars per training. So it's it's not pay; it's just to try to help cover the cost of fuel because we use our own vehicles to get to the station and mm -hmm. you know to, to go to trainings and that sort of thing. So it takes a pretty specially determined person who wants to serve to to become a firefighter. How many hours training does it take? Roughly, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've probably done a million hours in 30 years. It's not something that you train and then you're there. It's you're training and you're training and you're training. It's an ever evolving. Uh, the fire service evolves on a regular basis. New technologies, new risk. Um, <clears throat> initial training is, I believe, it's a three-month academy that we do. I'm not sure, but there's a uh, we can do a recruit academy at last several months that gives them their basics but then it's a constant training you know honing those skills and adding new things to it and, and so you never stop okay what would you say is the most repeated safety advice you give as being part of the fire department the, the advice that I get they give the most uh, just keep your head on a swivel stay cognizant of everything that's going on around you and listen to those that have the, the experience, listen to your officers and that, that have that experience and know-how. But uh, it's just be safe, look out for yourself, look out for your partner, don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna get yourself hurt and become part of the problem. And what advice do you give the most to non-firefighters? Uh, call early. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if there's something that you see going on that you believe that would require a response from the fire department, make the call quick. Don't try to, to deal with it yourself. It, by the time you make the call and by the time we're able to get there, if you've spent 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes trying to deal with it yourself, it could be at the point where we're not able to do anything but prevent extension. Okay. I'm getting close to the end of my questions. And, and this one in particular is interesting after the summer. There were people asking for a ban on fireworks on the 4th of July and the county commissioners said by law they need a year to put in place uh, the mechanism for a ban. Do you think Grant County Fire District 5 would support a ban on fireworks? Well at this point I can't speak for the district but speaking for myself I would. Uh, I've spent the past four years 
camped out at Station 4 down in Cascade Valley where I'm based out of, uh, waiting for the calls that we get. Uh, this last year we were on calls pretty much all night. Uh, the majority of what we did, in fact, I think every call we did that night was fireworks related. So yes, it's great to have the, the festive fireworks and things going off in the sky and everything, but with the dry environment that we have and all of the grass and, and uh, the, the risk that it puts the, the community as it's growing and the houses, you know, we're getting more houses, less open area, um, I, I just don't see the value in having that. All right, we're down to the last question. I ask every person running for office this question. So I don't think it's going to mean, but I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Are you ready? Go ahead. Why should people vote for you? I've got a lot of experience in a lot of areas. Uh, I've done a lot of things over my 57 years, been a lot of places. Um, but the 30 years in the fire service the, as a volunteer, other than the, the little over two years I was a career and I was a fire marshal, uh, my experience in the public sector working as a building official, as a building inspector, and being a public servant. Uh, I think that gives me not so much a unique insight, but an educated insight of what the, uh, the missions of the district are, and maybe be able to see some of the needs that the community have and bring that in into that environment and see if we can make some changes, make improvements where necessary, or make sure things just keep running on as smoothly as they have been. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Lee, for taking the time to come in and talk to us. It's been my pleasure. Greatly appreciate it. Be sure to watch more iFiber One News episodes on local elections and coverages before you vote. For iFiber One News, I'm Bill Stevenson. Mm -hmm.